Hi guys, I am Michael Simon. Welcome to today's class. So today I am going to make pot roast. I mean, who doesn't like pot roast? But what makes this pot roast so special is it is a pot roast for any season. We're gonna braise it and cook it really slow, which gives you all that rich deliciousness that you wanna kinda cuddle up with that makes pot roast so special. So it's great for the cooler days, but then we're gonna give it a little Mediterranean finish. It has the roasted carrots in there, some fresh mint, some lemon zest. It's really gonna brighten it up. So this is a pot roast that is every bit as comfortable in the summertime as it is by a fire in the winter. Now, a great little tip for large format cuts of meat like this. This is a, a chuck roast, a blade chuck roast. And I like to salt this the night before if I have time. It allows the salt to kind of penetrate down into the meat. It also makes the meat a little bit more tender, breaks down the cell structure of the meat a little bit. So it gives you even a more flavorful pot roast. Now, if you got this the day of and you had to start cooking, you could season it and let it go. Keep the seasoning on as long as you can. But if you can do this overnight, it is beneficial and you are gonna get better flavors. So I have kosher salt here, a big, hunk of meat, so you need a good amount of salt. So we salt it pretty liberally on all sides. And the thing is, once you put this in your fridge uncovered, you are going to see that the salt goes into the meat. It, you will not see it in the morning. And a little bit of moisture or water is gonna come out of the meat, which is gonna help you intensify the flavor of the beef and it's also gonna break down that structure a little bit to make things a little bit more tender. I like to put this on a rack, keep it off the tray, give my hands a quick wash. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press pause, we're gonna put this in the fridge, and I'll see you in the morning. Hey everybody, welcome back. A little Simon Says pot roast happening. So while we were away, I preset my oven to 350 degrees, so that is warming up. We took our pot roast out of the fridge. Now, when you look at this, you could see how it has changed in look a little bit. It's got a deeper red right here, which is because some of that moisture came off. We also let it uncovered, which forms almost like a pellicle on the exterior, which is gonna allow us to get that really good caramelization and browning on there. And what you can see is inside the meat, some of that moisture stuff has been released and the cell structure of the meat has changed a little bit, which is gonna make it more tender. So here's what salting in advance does for you. It gives you better flavor, it makes sure that the meat is seasoned all the way through, and it's gonna help the meat become a little bit more tender as you cook it. So that is a win-win for me if you have the time to do it. Now, I'm gonna move this out of the way for just a moment, and we're gonna start working on our bacon. Now, those of you that know me know that I have a love affair with bacon. It is. Like people say now, oh, bacon's trendy, everybody uses bacon, it's easy to make things good with bacon. All those things are true. I've loved bacon since I was a little kid. I still love bacon. I'm gonna love bacon till the day I die. My grandfather's 102, he eats bacon every day, and I will eat bacon just like him. So, we have slab bacon today, and what I did is this a little trick. If you wanna cut slab bacon into big chunks, what I did was we placed it in our freezer for just about 10 minutes before I started working for it. It just firms it up a little bit because bacon obviously has a lot of fat in it. And when that gets warm or comes to room temperature, it gets a little bit harder to work with. So freezing it just firms it up. I'm gonna take my range and turn it up to about medium. I have a Dutch oven here. To me, if you can have any pan at home, one of the ones that you should really look into is a Dutch oven. You could roast in it, you could braise in it, especially these cast enamel ones, they last forever. Great piece of equipment. I am gonna cut my bacon in pretty large chunks. So I'm gonna go straight down here, and then I'm just gonna cut these into like, like lardones, like sometimes you get those salads. If you go to a French restaurant every once in a while, that frisé salad with those big chunks of bacon, the poached eggs, that's how we're gonna cut our bacon here. And we're gonna render the bacon first, and the bacon is gonna release a good amount of fat, which is then gonna be what we cook everything else in. So this is a win-win for everyone. And you can see, because the bacon was frozen, it doesn't kinda, smash down as I'm cutting it. 
So here, when you look at this, you have the fat and the meat part. So you want to cut that way down. Go straight down there so you get that nice balance of fat and meat. If you cut it the other way, you're going to get the fat cap and then the meat. So you want it to look almost like 50-50 as you're cutting it. And I would just say, you know, find somebody or a brand that you really like, and when you could get slab bacon, it is a great option. You know, growing up in Cleveland, there were a lot of vendors throughout the market that smoked their own bacon and made slab bacon. And now at the restaurants and at home, we make our own bacon, which makes me very happy also. All right, let's continue to get this cut up. And then we just start rendering this out. Now, depending on some of the times with recipes and when you're cooking, you know, a recipe will say one thing, but sometimes a little bit of judgment needs to be made too. So with bacon, if you look at the bacon and the bacon looks a little bit on the lean side to you, it's okay to put a little bit of olive oil or an oil in the pan to kind of get that fat moving. This looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put in a small splash of oil, and this is just gonna help kind of the fat and everything get moving. So that is a judgment call for you. So bacon goes in, and we are gonna let the bacon start to render out. Remember too, another thing with bacon, when you're working with it, bacon has already been cooked, so when you buy bacon at the store, it's been cured and smoked, which means it's cooked through already. All we're doing is deciding on how much crispiness and texture and so forth that we want with the bacon when it's going in the pan. So you don't have to worry about when, with bacon, like, is, did I cook this enough? Is it undercooked? Cook it till the, the crispiness that you desire. And as that's going, I'm just gonna start working on some of my vegetables before we even get the, the meat going. I have shallots carrots, thyme, garlic, and coriander seed. So with the thyme, we're just gonna tie off about 10 sprigs of thyme. That's gonna go in. You don't have to tie it off. The reason that I do is because it makes it easy to remove once it is all done. So I'm just gonna do this first. Kind of get all of our, in professional kitchens, they say, you know, get your mise en place together. It means everything in place. But you just wanna kind of prep as you go. That way you're not wasting any time. <laughs> shallots, we're gonna start the peel. So I'm gonna remove both ends of the shallots and then we will just peel those. With carrots, I talk about this a lot during these cooking classes. I like to buy like a small, medium sized organic carrot clean them real good, and I leave the skins on. If they look really dirty to you or the skin looks beat up or, you know, you're not comfortable doing it, peel them. I don't peel them. All right, shallots, bacon's looking good. Keep that going. Let's continue to work on these guys. But really the great thing about pot roast and braises and you know, there's been a, a lot of popularity now with pressure cookers and Instapots and things like that. The thing that, a couple things that I love about braises is one, it's like having a meat candle in your house. Your whole house smells good for the entire process. Like it really makes things smell great. And then the other thing is, is when you do a classic braise like this, as the meat is cooking, the liquid is uh, evaporating, which is intensifying all the flavors. In a crock pot or Instapot or, you know, pick one of those, there's very little evaporation of liquid, so you don't get those deep, robust flavors. Now, will you save an hour, two hours, whatever, you not have to watch it or any of those kind of things. Yes, all that is true. And I know some people are limited with time and, and you know how much time they could sit over something. But you will never get the same flavors as you do with the braise. So even if this maybe ends up being a Sunday meal for you, something that you just do one day a week on Sundays because you could take a little bit more time over the stove, that is totally fine. But I would recommend it no matter how much you may be in love 
with some of those other equipments in your house, this is really where you get maximum flavor. And remember, before the crock pot, this, a cast enamel pot, a Dutch oven, was like the crock pot. Okay, I'll just keep peeling. It's more fun doing some of these at the restaurant because you have someone to do this for you. You can see that at grocery stores though now. One thing that has changed a lot since I've been little or younger is that you can find grocery stores that actually do this work for you where they, they peel the shallots or they cut vegetables and, and things of that nature. Not the ones that are like in glass jars, but they're actually packaged by, prepped and packaged by the store. So you can assure that they're still fresh. They, are, they do cost a little bit more, but they do save you time. I don't recommend buying like pre-sliced, pre-roasted, pre-sliced garlic that's all jarred because that's a different situation. All right. We're almost through our shallots. By the time we are through with the shallots, I'm gonna have the bacon at a place that I like it. And again, if you want it to be a little bit more crispy, you can make it more crispy, but remember, this is a braised dish, so even as you crisp it, it's still gonna get soft through the cooking procedure. But I like to get a little bit of caramelization on there for flavor. It also helps some caramelization happen at the bottom of the pan or that fond, which is then gonna come up into our sauce, which is really gonna make the pot roast big, big flavors. I'm telling you, I could peel. I think when they were shopping for shallots for me, they made sure that every shallot that they bought had two heads in it, just to test my patience today. But I'm not backing down, I'm sticking with it. One more to go. But again, you could see a lot of times with cooking, you know, when you're cooking, it's all about timing everything to make the job as easy as possible. So while you have dead time, which would be this, the, the bacon browning, <clears throat> it also gives you a moment to peel the shallots. So the bacon is ready. I'm gonna remove that to my plate. Turn the heat down just a touch. And you can see that because these are nice big chunks of bacon, <clears throat> you get a little bit of that crispiness on the outside, but it's still gonna be really meaty on the inside, which is what I want in a stew or a braise like this. What I don't want is little, thin little chunks of bacon because they're just gonna go away and be almost unidentifiable. So, bacon is browned. Now we are going to put in our pot roast that we have seasoned already, so you don't need to add any more seasoning to this and we're just gonna put this right in that rendered bacon fat. I'm gonna turn my heat back up to high. And I'm just gonna let this continue to brown on, we're gonna get it browned on kind of all sides. Really hard sear on the larger pieces. Do not cheat this step. A lot of times people put meat in a pan, they start moving it around, dancing around, doing the, you know, the jig. You really have to let this caramelize and get that right on the edge of like, you're like, oh my gosh, I think it's almost burnt. That's when you flip it. That deep caramelization is where you get those deep, luscious flavors that everybody loves about a braise. So take your time here. And because I have a little bit of time, I could continue to work on my vegetables. So I'm gonna get my carrots cut. I'm gonna get my garlic peeled and smashed. And so we have a little bit of time to go through this process here. When you look down at your carrots, kind of keep them the same thickness and so forth as your shallots so everybody is cooking at the same time. Put these in my little bowl. And 
now we'll start peeling our garlic. And I'm gonna, today I'm gonna use about five cloves. If you like more garlic, add more garlic. If you don't like garlic, use less garlic. And I, what I really always wanna show with any of my cooking classes is to me it's imperative you learn the technique. Because if you learn this technique, you could make hundreds of different kinds of braises and change the ingredients within them as you go. You could use pork instead of beef. You could use turnips instead of carrots, whatever it is. You could add more garlic, less garlic. You could make it spicy. But the key here is the technique of the braise. So I'm gonna get all this on the thing. This goes in the compost. I'm gonna use six of the largest cloves in here. Four, five, six. Save these three for a rainy day or a vampire. Take off the edge. And then I'm just gonna give these a little smash and a peel. This should be good and brown. All right, that's what I'm looking for. You guys see that? We didn't move it, we didn't touch it, nothing happened. We just worked on our vegetables. And we got that great caramelization because the pan is doing a lot of the work for us. And that's really why you buy these cast enamel or a cast iron or a heavy pan that conducts heat really nicely. You're letting it do all the heavy lifting as you go. So now the garlic, just give it a little pop with the knife peel off the skin, and we're not even gonna slice this up. I'm just gonna leave it whole. Good trick with garlic too is, if you need to do a, a lot of it at a time, you can put it in between two metal mixing bowls and shake, and it'll pop all these skins right off. So if you're not into the tedious part of this process, that works too. One of these had two cloves in it, so there's our six. Goes over here, wipe down the cutting board. All right. Again, good caramelization. I'm gonna get these other two sides. So as I'm getting the sides, I have a little bit more room in the pan over here. So I'm gonna just let my vegetables start to brown in there a little bit and then we'll finish it when we pull out the rest of this meat. So we got the two, we got great caramelization on both sides. I'm just searing the other two sides. Then this goes off to a pan and we could add the rest of our vegetables, season them and continue to build the braise. All right, so carrots and onions are in. Again, now we have that beautiful rendered bacon fat in there. We also have a little bit of rendered fat from the beef. We had the garlic. I have my thyme bundle. Just gonna set that, tie it to the handle so it's easy to get off later. And now we're gonna deglaze the pan. So you could use, in, in this type of pan, you could use a metal spoon. I sometimes, I, you can use metal, wooden, either one works. So we have beer, we have cider, and we have stock. The recipe called for four beers. Some of that may be because you just want an extra one for yourself. So we're gonna go two cups of the cider. Maybe three to four beers, depending on what time of the day it is for you cooking. If you're starting this in the morning, you could put it all in your pot roast. If this is an afternoon project, go three beers and save one for yourself. All right, two cups of cider. And now you just wanna rub the bottom of that pan 
There we go. There's a wooden spoon. This is better. So you had all that beautiful caramelization at the bottom of the pan. Once you add your first amount of liquid in, you want to scrape the bottom of the pan with your wooden spoon to pull that caramelization or that fond into the sauce. Never waste a moment to get flavor. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of toasted coriander seeds. Two whole bay leaves, dried or fresh, depending on what you can find. Couple beers. Use what, you know, I'm using a lager here, a porter would work. Really, it, it's kind of, I feel beers like wine, and you hear cooks and chefs say this all the time, use one that you love to drink, and I do think that that is true here too. You know, if, if the wine or beer <clears throat> tastes bad to you out of the bottle, it's not gonna taste good in your dish, especially because this is reducing as it's cooking, so it's actually gonna intensify the flavors as it goes. Continue to bring this up to a simmer. Have our stock. I always like to have extra stock on hand, but visually we're gonna see where we end up in the liquid. Remember, a braise is different. It's not boiled meat, it's braised meat. So we wanna cover the meat about three quarters and keep that top quarter exposed, and we'll baste it as we're going. We see that's caramelizing too much as we go. We, we can even give it a flip and continue that way. So in recipes, I typically tell you to have you know more stock than you may need. So let's look at this. So we're just about exposed here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of stock in so I can keep the top of that meat exposed. We're gonna add our crisp bacon back to our braise. I'm gonna put this lid on and we're gonna let this go for about three to four hours until it is incredibly tender. So hit pause, we'll see you in a bit. Hey everybody, welcome back. So the pot roast was in the oven for about four hours. It is looking and smelling fantastic in here. And you can see when I take the lid off, the liquid is still slightly below the meat. We got some good caramelization right on there. All those vegetables are tender too now. This is what makes me very happy. So when you look at this, it's so tender. As I'm grabbing it with these meat forks, it just totally breaks apart. And what I like to do is I break up the meat a little bit right in the broth, and then we could spoon it out and start building our plate from there. So this way, when you pull it apart in here, it kind of gets the benefit of getting some of that extra juice on there. So now we're gonna take some nice chunks. Oh, the lucky bay leaf, move that. And we're just gonna start putting some good chunks in our serving vessel. And it's just meltingly tender. Some bacon chunks in there. Oh yeah, this was one of my favorite things growing up. My mom is Greek and Sicilian, so when she made this, she would actually put in a little bit of tomato sauce too in the broth. And I like that method too. And again, the technique is exactly the same. She would just add some tomatoes because that's how she liked to roll. I keep mine a little bit more on the brothy side because it's how I enjoy it. But you should make this how you enjoy it best. So we have those vegetables, the shallots, the chunks of garlic, the carrots. You could really smell the thyme. Here's the beautiful thing about bundling the thyme. It's just so easy to pull out, just like that. And now I'm gonna take some fresh mint. And what I like to do with mint, mint is such a soft herb. I don't feel the need to kind of slice it, chop it, dice it. I just pick it and then I'm gonna tear it and place it right on top. And I think any soft herb works very nice here. Basil would be good, flat leaf parsley would be good, cilantro. I like kind of the, that 
Sicilian slash Greek flair of the mint and how it brightens up the whole dish. Take a little bit of lemon zest on top. And now I'm just going to grab some extra broth. And if you're serving this for your friends, you could either do the broth on the side and they could add it. But I like to put a little bit of broth after I put the mint and the lemon in there because when that hot broth hits the mint and the lemon zest, it helps it release its oils. So it really just perfumes the whole broth. All right, let's see what we got. A little snack for Mikey. I'm a growing boy. So bacon, carrots, pot roast. I got myself a shallot, a little bit of herbage. Come here. And I also think it's important, I don't even need the knife. I also think it's important to give this all a taste before you feed your friends. See if it needs a little bit of salt. See if it needs a little bit more pepper. Maybe you want to hit it with some more lemon. All your choices. So those carrots cooked in that beef broth, so good. The meat, you could see, I could just break it apart with my fork. Don't even need a knife. Um, those great bacon lardons that we cut earlier and seared off. See how they stayed big, nice, and chunky? Like me. Perfect. All right, that's it. Little Simon Says pot roast. I hope you get in the kitchen and try this one. Remember, because of the mint, because of the lemon, it is great for every season. It's going to blow your friends away. Inexpensive, delicious, hearty. It hits every note. We'll see you later. Take care.